Hello, everyone, and welcome to session three, workshop 13 of the EdCollab Gathering. Um, I'm very excited to introduce two great presenters today. First, uh, Dr. Lakita Outlaw, who is the co-president of the Suffolk County Middle Level Principals Association and past president of the Long Island Association of Supervision and Curriculum Development. Uh, secondly, I want to introduce Dr. Danielle Gately, who is an administrator in the East Williston Union Free School District in Old Westbury. New York. And based on their positions, it's not surprising at all to see them talking today about women in leadership. And I'm really looking forward to the presentation, and I hope you are too. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Danielle Gately. Good morning or good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, currently, I serve as the assistant to the superintendent for instruction and curriculum in East Williston, which is a small district on the north shore of Long Island. Uh, this is my first year in this role, so it's been of a, a bit of a whirlwind of a start to the school year. Uh, it's my fifth year in the district. Prior to this, I started my career in the Oceanside School District, first as a middle school social studies teacher, uh, and then as the uh, department supervisor and a middle school team leader. So I spent most of my career in middle school, which makes me very happy to present alongside Dr. Laquita Outlaw, and I'll let her take a moment to introduce herself today. Good afternoon, everyone. And just as Danielle has said, thank you so much for joining us. And I am currently a principal at Bayshore Middle School and have served in that role for the past 12 years. Prior to that, I was the assistant principal in that same building and the instructional supervisor. So my entire middle school um, time has been serving in an administrative role. Prior to that, I was an English language arts teacher for seventh through 12th grade and loved every absolute moment of it and am excited about presenting next to Danielle, who I admire and adore tremendously. Great, so we're excited to get started today. We have, I think, an exciting presentation to talk to you about uh, the role of women in leadership um, and really all the different paths that this conversation can take us down. Right. Us for uh, the pre-recorded session or you're joining us live, we can't tell you that we know the time that you're spending with us is because you're currently thinking about the same things that we were thinking about when we first thought of beginning administration and when we were in the classroom, as well as the things that we certainly think about each time that we are interacting and engaging um, as a leader. Please feel free to follow along with us on Twitter. Both of our Twitter handles are on the screen and you can use the hashtag uh, Hashtag the Ed Collab Gathering uh, space hashtag number 13 and that will allow us to track your thoughts uh, and reflections with us today. Topic for a reason and that there was something that piqued your interest and feel free using those Twitter handles um, to share with us what it is that you wanted to find out about. You looked at the topic women in leadership. Okay, just getting right back to that presentation. Maybe. And as Danielle brings up those um, images, you're going to shortly see three images that certainly when you think of women um, in leadership or in leadership roles that come to mind. And so when you see these images, what we want you to do is to share with us, what is it that you think about these images? What resonates with you? image that you see there is of a woman who is balancing both her little one and uh, whatever phone or conversation that she's having. You'll see that you have someone in, again, a leadership role who you're trying, who is trying to, um, you know, sort of balance both home life and work life as well. These are some interesting images because I think they all 
uh, serve to draw some memories for all of us, maybe not quite in uh, exactly the way they're represented there. Um, so I guess when I look at these pictures, they, they certainly bring up memories for me. I don't know that I've ever cooked dinner looking quite that good. Um, <laughs> always maybe a little more frazzled and uh, maybe yelling at my kids to get off the kitchen counter. Um, <laughs> and, you know, trying to enjoy your time at the park or doing something, you know, with your kids. But, you know, always what's going on in the back of your mind is what are you not doing? Or, you know, those are kinds of the things that um, come to my mind when I look at these pictures. And, of course, we've all had those frazzled moments with our kids when they were little. Um, you know, trying to get it all done. So I think, you know, what resonates with me is that we've each had moments like that. And rather than separating them, I think they all kind of blend together in my head. To say that, you know, when I, when I think about and look at these three pictures as well, it's the latter picture, that third picture of the woman spending time with her baby and them enjoying themselves that I always strive for feel like the woman in the first picture where I'm trying to figure out how to make it all work. <laughs> and we know that when we look at leadership, it is trying to balance all of that that we struggle with um, in our matriarchal roles the most. That's a good point, Latina. Okay. Moving right along, you know, this cartoon so resonates, I think, with both of us, um, you know, because I think the way we see ourselves versus the way other people see ourselves, see us, um, you know, is so interesting. One of the things that people often say is, how do you do it all? How do you manage to get it all done? And sometimes that has a negative connotation, but very often it doesn't. Um, so this cartoon really resonates with us. And, and this is a cartoon that we shared um, I think with our Voxer group, which has really been a supportive group, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, and this is often one of those that you see around Mother's Day coming out. Um, you know, this idea that that we can manage to do it all because somehow we have these superpowers. But I think as we get through the presentation today, we'll see it's really not magic, but um, just a lot of hard work and dynamic things that all come together to make it work. And the key is to find ways with the resources that are available and around you in order to ensure that you're able to make it work to what's important to you, what fits, and um, the small things that you're able to do every day that make a difference for you. One of the key themes I think that we're going to touch upon throughout the, the couple of minutes that we have together today is the historical changes that women have made. You know, this idea of, you know, we can do it all, which of course first emerged with Rosie the Riveter, um, and this expectation that has now come to be that, you know, we have to do it all because we can do it all. Um, and the idea of, you know, the, the idea of doing it all perfectly. And, you know, that's the society, um, the way society now kind of pressures women and really everybody to get it all done with, um, these standards that, you know, put so much pressure on so many of us. Okay, so if you're here and you're participating with us digitally, uh, there's some, there's a few ways to include yourself in this poll. Um, and do this, you can text your answers. It's just an interesting question. The question, yes, the question for you is, um, you know, the true or false, do women make up a majority of the U.S. population? And using that, that poll response, go in and uh, share with us your thoughts, true um, or false, and we'll share those momentarily mm -hmm. with everyone. If we get a response um, via Twitter, via the poll, um, we'll give it just... Uh, five seconds and to see if there's anyone that is able to provide a response for us. And then we're going to move on to you, the information. I think just give, uh, give a few seconds because it takes a little bit to, to text all that. Um, sure. Yeah.
And is there a way to uh, come back to the poll? Like a oh, it'll show there. Okay. Yeah. And you know, um, as as everyone is um, potentially participating, whether it's live or not, what uh, we do want to share certainly is that as you um, think about that, and as you think about the that you yourself has come across um, when you think about your own personal workspace and your own personal work environment, you see that you have um, in the elementary setting, you see that you have um, more female teachers who um, are in the building and who are surrounding the students that we're working with. And so we then in fact uh, do see that women make up over 50.8 percent population. No, not quite an overwhelming majority, but a majority nonetheless. And I'm sure that. Uh, and I don't. I don't think that there are any surprises there, right? It's why there's a bit of competition, um, ladies, for all the good men, right? <laughs> okay. We can show how the, these polls work. If you've never used one of these polls, they're a fun and interesting way to gather information from staff or from teachers or from students. If you have a one-to-one -one initiative or a BYOD policy in your school, they're fun to use with, um, with others in your, in your class or in your building. Okay, we have another one here, but um, you know, again, just another way to show um, you know, the difference really, do women represent a majority of the professional level leadership positions? And I think you can see where we're going with this. So we won't waste too much time here um, using the poll, but we can show um, certainly the results of them later on. I think you're, all of you are rather intelligent and you can see exactly where we're going this with, with this. So we'll skip right to the answers here. Okay, so certainly while there are 45% of um, of women participating in the overall labor force. 37% of first and mid-level officials and managers are women, but only 25% of executives and senior level officials are women. So, you know, one of the things that um, is a little discouraging when you look at the research surrounding this is there's not a lack of educated or highly educated women to fill these roles all of the colleges and the upper level degree programs will tell you that there's more than enough women in their programs. So women are filling the pipelines to uh, be prepared for these positions. Um, where does the drop off happen and why does the drop off happen is really a more interesting question. And you'll see that you'll see that, that, that drop off is even um, just as alarming for women in educational positions. And even though the women are um, represented highly at the teacher level, the classroom level, at the leadership level, those numbers drop significantly. Um, of the 14,000 women who are in leadership um, superintendency roles, only 2,000 of them superintendents. Right, and of course that's a nationwide statistic. And with women, although there are 50% um, in education, you'll see that in those leadership roles, women take a lot longer to decide that they want to participate in a leadership role. And teacher leaders are just the same. Um, they're willing to step up and be a teacher leader in a limited capacity. But considering what it is that is needed in the administrative role, that the risk takes a little longer for women where um, a man will in fact wait and see um, and say I'm ready for this where women will uh, wonder whether he or she is ready for a leadership role and question those who are around her to see if they believe that she is ready for a leadership role rather than having that self-confidence needed to step into a leadership role. Right. We're going to touch again on that later. There's a few different topics um, later on in the show that talk more about that later on in the show, later on in the presentation that talk more about that. 
Um, but consider this, you know, we're looking at education here and the role that women play in leadership positions, but consider just a moment the world stage. And, and while we're certainly not going to get political here, of the 190 heads of state internationally, only nine, the number single number nine are women. Of all the parliaments in the world, only 13% of the seats are filled by women. Now, of course, we know the state of the world today, and you know, I think one clear solution is to fill more of those seats with women, and we could potentially see a drastic change in the compromises being made, and of course, the um, you know the ability to maybe get ourselves out of some of the problems that we're currently in. But we'll see where this election takes us. And just like in education, it isn't for lack of the availability of women who are in governmental positions or who are in educational um, capacities where they can fill those. So the question becomes, that prevents us from being willing to step forward and take on those leadership positions. Right, absolutely. Moving on to the next slide, one, one of the things that um, is so interesting to me one of the articles that we reference later on um, at the end slide, why women can't still have it all. Uh, the author discusses some of the many barriers still facing women. And he cites something called the new gender gap. And he measures um, the well-being gap, what he calls the well-being gap rather than the wage gap. And he talks about closing this gap um, requires us to close the leadership gap really that exists between men and women in leadership positions. Of course, we're on track this year to potentially elect a woman president. He talks about you know, the need to elect significantly more female senators, female Congress, uh, Congress, congressmen, Congress leaders, really. Um, ensuring that women are equally represented will, um, you know, in the ranks of corporate executives, judicial leaders. These are really um, the only way that women will wield power in sufficient numbers to create a society real, that really will genu genuinely work for all women, um, not just women in leadership positions. But if we don't help to build up our women that are you know, working at all levels, not just in high ranking leadership positions, but the women who are struggling to make ends meet, um, you know, the single mothers, the women who are, you know, working in two family households that don't have the options, you know, to maybe leave the workforce when they want to and, you know, are forced to continue working who maybe aren't in the education pipeline, but really all women. And that's really closing that leadership gap. And for Asian, Black, and Hispanic women, the numbers um, are even worse. There are fewer African American and Asian women who are in leadership roles. There's only about three percent women who are in leadership roles that are women of color. And it's important that we look to change that using all of the resources that we have available to us. So you know. We've laid out a lot of issues. Sounds like a lot of negativity. Um, don't get us wrong. Laquita and I are some of the most positive people that you will come across. Um, you know, so really, what do we do? What are some solutions? What can we do as educators? What can we do as leaders? How can we help those to advance that are looking to advance? And how can we encourage those in positions um, to build themselves up and to help build some of our girls up in our classrooms? And so there's some advice that we want to offer to those of you who have joined us because you are wondering the same um, as we are. And so some of the advice that we have um, for you is um, certainly taking a look at many of the um, opportunities that you have around you. And what I always share with the um, people that I have the pleasure of working with as well as um, providing opportunity to is um, to always be prepared. Always put yourself in a position so that no matter when the opportunity arises that you are ready for that opportunity. You want to be able to demonstrate for the person who you are working with 
has the ability to promote you um, to show them that you are always ready for the next step and the next challenge. The yeah. other is to try balancing yeah. it all. <laughs> and that one is the one that isn't as easy as some of the others. But when you think about balancing it all, and you'll see later on in the presentation, we're not saying an if or. What we're saying is that there is a way to blend it so that you are able to enjoy both your work experience and your life experience. The other is to make sure that um, in being prepared and ready that you work hard because it is within us to demonstrate that we can do it all, but in working hard, it doesn't mean working more or doing more. What it means is being smart about the way that you do the work that you do. You know, people often talk about luck. You know, I was lucky I got this position. I was lucky I had this opportunity. But I really believe that it's all about working hard and making yourself available for the opportunities that come your way. Um, I don't believe in luck. I think luck um, kind of finds you when you work hard and make yourself ready and available. That's when people start to recognize you. So sometimes it feels like you get lucky, um, but I really believe you kind of set yourself up for the opportunities that present yourself to you. Um, you know, as a parent, I always talk to my kids about working hard and not because of the whole growth mindset thing, but I mean, of course, that's a, a feature. I just think that when you work hard, you open yourself up for opportunities that then find themselves your way. It's really just never about luck. It's about being in the right place in the right time and being prepared because you've set yourself up. So you do. Yeah, what you're sharing certainly talks to uh, perseverance because there are times when we will feel like much of what we're doing has um, no purpose and is not getting us anything other than gr grief, <laughs> but don't feel that way. You know, you continue to persevere and part of the strength um, of the women who uh, are able to take it the next step further is that they are resilient, that they are able to persevere, continuing to be mobile within the roles and positions that they have. They continue to challenge themselves and not just in the positions or choosing a different position, but making things better for them and just being better today than they were yesterday. And that is part of what makes us um, mobile and gives us the ability to persevere. And the other, which for Danielle and myself is um, absolutely vital and key, the support system that is strong and that helps you to move um, stage of what you need in order to persevere. Right, my sister refers to this as your tribe. You know, who, you have to pick your tribe members carefully. You know, sometimes you get to pick your friends, you get to pick your support. Sometimes it's your family and you can pick your family, but you can choose who to surround yourself with the most. Um, and these are the people who jump right in when you need them. These are the people who, um, you know, you can call on at any time or day. You know, when Lucrito and I were working on this presentation, she picked up pieces when my life got crazy. I picked up pieces when her life got crazy. These are the kind of people that you learn to support yourself and surround yourself with because they're the people who get it. The people who know that life sometimes throws you 13 hour days and sometimes it throws you six hour days. And that's the kind of balance that you find yourself with. And you use that to not only help yourself, but to help the people around you who might need it. Um, and not only as a woman, but it's a human being. Those, those are the members of your tribe that make your life not only worth you know, spending your moments, those are the people you spend your moments with, but those are the kind of people that you know, make it, you able to be a successful human being. And if the people that you surround yourself with are not building you up and making you a better person, you know, find new members of your tribe and don't be afraid to do that because you know, there is just no time for negativity in your life. There's enough that you can't control. You know, we're teachers, we're educators, we deal with sometimes negative people because that's part of our job. But in our personal lives, we can control that. And I can't stress enough how important that is. Finding yourself with the people who help you to believe in yourself and who challenge you is um, what you want to seek. And there are so many other resources now with the internet that. It doesn't have to be your neighbor 
or someone that's in your school building. You now have the ability to extend that um, tribe for to people that we once would never have had the opportunity. All right. You know, just a quick shout out to being a connected educator here. Um, you know, you probably found your way to this online conference because you're connected through Twitter. Um, if you're not, and you know, you just dabbled here because somebody emailed you the link, then please connect through Twitter. You can start with Laquita and I, but there are so many people who are learning together on a daily basis. Um, you know, you can shout out a quick question. I need a resource for this writing activity, or I'm looking for a book for this reading activity that I'm doing, or I need an idea for back to school night to connect with my parents. And you will just simply get inundated with ideas for people who are doing, you know, just wonderful things. And these are the kind of people who will raise the bar for you. And as an educator, if you are not looking to raise the bar for yourself as a human, if you are not looking to raise the bar for yourself, um, you know, well, you probably wouldn't be here today because it's a Saturday at one o'clock and <laughs> the sun is out. Um, so I just believe that, um, you know, you are that person. Um, you know, who is looking to really do that. So I have to, I have to think that, you know, you're a learner and you're here for all the right reasons. So um, if you're not a connected educator, then reach out to us and we will help you to get connected. And one of the um, texts, I think, and you'll see that in our resource list, the book Lean In is something that we mention and reference and refer to. And so, the quote that stood out to Danielle and myself most was about holding ourselves back because we hold ourselves back in ways, both big and small, by lacking self-confidence, by not raising our hands and by pulling back when we should be leaning in. Leaning in is more about finding ways um, to seek the people and resources and taking the risks for you to be willing and able to work yourself up to um, seeing that you have more strength and the ability to do more than you ever gave yourself credit for. And when you think about leaning in, leaning in is about not being afraid. It isn't okay to be afraid because in fear comes the unknown. And the only way that you are able to know is by doing. And so um, by not being afraid, we're saying to um, be willing to give yourself the opportunity to learn and to grow. You know, certainly comes to mind is what would you do if you weren't afraid? What would you do if you were willing to take risks and you were willing to allow yourself um, to explore beyond even your own expectations. This is such an interesting question. Um, you know, when we put this out to the group of women that are in our Voxer group, again, we, we mentioned this Voxer group and we have just such an amazing, inspiring group of women. Uh, we got such great conversations. Um, we even got a group of women who, we even got a woman who applied for a job after having this conversation with us about what would you do if you weren't afraid. Um, you know, just a simple question, you know, causes such self-reflection in people. Um, you know, thinking back on my own life and what would I do if I wasn't afraid? What have I done um, when I didn't let fear get in my way? You know, of course, that kind of reflection in anyone can really um, cause some life-changing things. And isn't, aren't these the kind of questions we want to ask our students, um, that we want to encourage them to really think about? You know, what's the worst that can happen if you try something? Um, you know, of course, in a safe space, if we make our classroom safe spaces for kids to have these conversations, to try new things, to try to learn new things. Um, Really interesting questions. Yes, and for me, it, it, it also raises the question, if this is what we are always willing to encourage, not just others um, and our students to do, um, but everyone around us who would ever come and inquire and ask for advice, then why aren't we willing to take our own advice? Why aren't we willing to do what we would suggest others do, which is to be brave 
and to take that risk. That's great. And so it's important that we certainly be willing to push ourselves to do a bit more. And there's a brief video that we wanted to share with you that looks at, it's a TED Talk that looks at um, teaching girls to be brave um, and not perfect because we ourselves have always said that we have to be perfect and that's not at all what we need to be. What we need to be is brave. Right. It's a long, it's a 12 minute video. We're only gonna show you about a two minute clip. So. Um... Just give me one moment while um, I'm fine. When you play it, if you could unplug your headphones yep, and turn it. up the volume high on your computer. Okay, got it. Oops. Sorry about that. going to be perfect in. Most girls are taught to avoid risk and failure. They're taught to smile pretty, play it safe, get all A's. Boys, on the other hand, are taught to play rough, swing high, crawl to the top of the monkey bars, and then just jump off head first. And by the time they're adults, and whether they're negotiating a raise or even asking someone out on a date, they're habituated to take risk after risk. They're rewarded for it. It's often said in Silicon Valley, no one even takes you seriously unless you've had two failed startups. In other words, we're raising our girls to be perfect and we're raising our boys to be brave. Some people worry about our federal deficit, but I, I worry about our bravery deficit our economy, our society, we're just losing out because we're not raising our girls to be brave. The bravery deficit is why women are underrepresented in STEM, in C-suites, in boardrooms, in Congress, and pretty much everywhere you look. In the 1980s, psychologist Carol Dweck looked at how bright fifth graders handled an assignment that was too difficult for them. She found that bright girls were quick to give up. The higher the IQ, the more likely they were to give up. Bright boys, on the other hand, found the difficult material to be a challenge. They found it energizing. They were more likely to redouble their efforts. What's going on? Well, at the fifth grade level, girls routinely outperform boys in every subject, including math and science. So it's not a question of ability. The difference is in how boys and girls approach a challenge. And it doesn't just end in fifth grade. An HP report found that men will apply for a job if they meet only 60% of the qualifications. But women? Women will apply only if they meet 100% of the qualifications. 100%. This study is usually invoked as evidence that, well, women need a little more confidence. But I think it's evidence that women have been socialized to aspire to perfection and they're overly cautious. Okay, so just a to be jumping um, jumping yeah, right back so in no, here. It, yep. And it's no longer okay for us to socialize ourselves and our other young women to be perfect. And there are so many resources that we have available to us in literature for us to be able to demonstrate and show our girls that yes they can do it yes they can be brave no 100 percent um, of the don't have to meet 100 percent of the qualifications in order for them to be willing to go that next step right you know we spend so much time with our girls in classrooms every day as educators you know, this is a literacy conference for the most part. And of course, reading is key to so much, you know, so what can we do? 
to reach kids. Of course, our everyday nuance in language, you know, giving girls the opportunity to speak. We know that girls tend to get cut off more when they're speaking or they tend not to even raise their hands. So, you know, just the small nuances in, you know, how we listen and let girls talk. But, you know, what kind of books do we have in our classroom? We know that, you know, female strong characters in books were lacking in books of the last century. But we also know that things are getting better. You know, the diversity in books and the strong female leads in our books are are not what they used to be. They are available. So, you know, as educational leaders and as teachers in our classrooms, how do we encourage our girls and our boys to read books, both fiction and nonfiction, that inspire girls and boys to recognize the strength of women and girls in their everyday lives? You know, looking at the screen, just to mention a few books that are available that should be in everybody's library, whether they're you know, in kindergarten or in, you know, middle school or high school. Some of these are classics. You know, Jerry Spinelli's Star Girl, I think every sixth grader or every middle schooler reads those books. But do we recognize that, you know, there are strong female leads? Do we pay the attention that needs to be paid and, and bring out the, the, um, the strong female lead characters in them? Matilda is a classic. You know, Matilda is, is a great strong female character for girls. Jesus and Ramona, Beverly Cleary, another strong female lead. I read that book when I was a kid, but nobody ever pointed out to me that those were strong girls. Esperanza Rising. Esperanza had faced so many, um, so many tragedies in her life and, and managed to help her mom when they left Mexico and moved to California, another strong female lead. Um, you know, Lois Lowry, Number the Stars, another example of a girl overcoming so much tragedy. Uh, the Ninth Ward, looking at this book, this girl survived so much after the hurricane in Louisiana, so, met, so much tragedy, but again, a strong female lead, The Hunger Games, we've all read those books, we've seen the movies, but do we recognize them for the strength in the female lead characters? So not just having the books, but using them to talk about girl power, to talk about bravery, to talk about female leadership. And in each and every one of them, there's a young lady who's sitting in that classroom or who's listening to you or who's watching you that you can in fact provide them with a relationship, a connection in some way, because that's how we ourselves have improved our own leadership skills and abilities and willingness to take risk is by seeing someone else doing it or by someone sharing with us um, that yes, we could do it. And we then began to believe in ourselves. And we don't need a non, we don't need fiction characters alone to help us do that. But we can also utilize nonfiction texts and show girls that it isn't just um, okay, that we have people who are stepping up and who are able to provide us with references and connections, um, but not only yesterday, but today. There are so many powerful women leaders who have the ability to help us see that, yes, we can. Right. And let's not do this on a day or a month that celebrates, you know, women's history. You know, as a social studies teacher, that was always a little bit of a gripe of mine. You know, there were women and there were African-Americans and there were Hispanics who contributed and they needed to be celebrated all year as we taught about all the white men who did wonderful things. Um, you know, not just for a day or a month or a week. When we're teaching historical accomplishments, let's also highlight the historical accomplishments of women, of, of African Americans, and of Hispanics. Because otherwise our kids just say, oh, well, they didn't contribute throughout history. You know, that was just a month, or a week, or a day. You know, so when we're looking at nonfiction, let's look at nonfiction and celebrate it all year, not just for Women's History Month. You know, let's really share these favorites throughout the year. Just a little gripe of mine. So if you're looking at these books, please look at them all year. And although more diversity is needed in our children's books to allow our young women to see their images on the pages of those books, um, the diversity that does exist allows us to help every single young lady that sits before us see that, he, that she can make a difference. Um, that there were others who were before her who had not had the examples, but now have the examples and can be an example for others. Right. Things Just that we were looking at is the uh, classroom library and how do you assess? Right. 
a little your shout out, yeah, a little shout out to the Ed Collab. This is a great rubric, um, you know, to use when you're looking at your classroom library. How does it hold up? And this is also a great tool to bring to your administrators. You know, look, I'm looking at my own classroom library. I'm using this with my kids to look at my classroom library. I could really use some funding for some books. Um, you know, it's hard to turn down a really um, inspired classroom teacher, especially with some facts. Um, so this is a great tool. Um, let's skip to um, the slide with the few moments that we have remaining um, that share a little bit about balancing all of this. Great. Yes, you got it. Okay. Do you want to skip the video? So, but yes, I think we're going to have to skip the video. Right. But it will be available it. in the pre-recorded, I think. So yeah. <laughs> It's a good one. It's funny. Okay. How about this? This one, Laquita, does this look good? And so we all get our 24 hours in a day, but what's important is how we choose to use those 24 hours. And so consider this, um, you know, the idea about, about not balance, um, but about um, blending your life. And there are some tips that we wanted to share with you, some of our favorites. Okay. Just some real life examples here. You know, again, 24 hours in the day, some of us get to spend some of those hours sleeping. I always say if I had the ability to have a superpower, it would be to not need the ability to sleep um, because just think about how much more productive we could be. Um, you know, but we spend a lot of time sitting through wonderful activities with our kids um, or, you know, doing drive back and forths and waiting for them to come out. You know, how often do we get to indulge in our favorite book? Bring it with you. You know, you can look up every once in a while and watch them, but, you know, it would be really nice to be able to spend some time digging into an article or digging into a book that you want to get through. And we constantly want to make ourselves available to everyone. I know that in my um, in role as principal, I get a lot of, do you have the minutes? I'm sure you get that too, Danielle, right? Constantly. And so what we want to do is be there for everybody, but we have to recognize that free time doesn't mean available time. And it's okay to say no when you need a moment to just reflect on the last conversation that you had. Give yourself that permission to think for, for a bit before moving on and making yourself available to someone else. Make yourself available for you too. Right. That's a great point. You know, you can say, maybe I'll get back to you. You don't have to say yes to everything right away. Uh, one of the greatest things that I've discovered is audiobooks, whether it's a book that's the latest and greatest or whether it's even a podcast that you want to listen to. Um, you know, audiobooks are available for free from your library for download. Audible has a great subscription that's not that expensive. It gives you the ability to download a book a month or two books a month, depending on the subscription. You know, that time in your car is precious that you're driving back and forth or that you're driving around or that you're walking and you want to listen to the headphones on your phone. Um, you know, technology can steal some of our time, but it also gives us back some of our time. Um, so if you're an avid reader like I am, and I know Laquita is, it's really a great service to be able to listen. Um, you know, we're grownups. We don't have to spend time with eyes on text all the time. Um, we know how to read, and we're probably pretty good at it. So it's okay to listen to a book every once in a while. Um, and some of the readers of these books are really, really wonderful. They give you a whole new perspective on this story. So take advantage of some of that that's available for you. And we're going to skip through a few of our other favorites um, by creating it you know, and saying set boundaries and create um, appointments on your own calendar so that it forces you to move on or move out of your office space. That's a great idea. You know, if you sit in your office, sometimes people will come in and just rob your whole day, which is great. It's good to talk to people sometimes, um, but really it's, it really can steal your time so quickly. And I know we're gonna get ready to wrap up, right, Ryan? There's a, a couple of things that we, we just wanted to share. The last couple of things, we can get this in, right? Um, mm. Don't allow for um, the delivery of items to your home to feel as if you are less than. It's okay <laughs> to have services like Amazon um, Prime or Peapod drop some things off to give yourself 
an extra few moments. That's so true. Peapod is one of my favorites. I'll just share with you now that I have older kids. They have Peapod on their own phones signed into my account, and they add their own groceries to our Peapod delivery <laughs> order. So if you have older kids, try it. You can still check it, so make sure that they're you know getting some healthy cereal in there, but it's really great. Great, well, um, I really wanna thank the both of you. This was a great presentation to watch. On Twitter, you had a lot of people shouting out, um, quoting you, saying good things uh, about the presentation. So it was definitely well received. And I think it was especially powerful just coming from the two of you, given your positions um, in leadership. I, I know personally as a teacher, as now at a school with it's about 70% female, uh, what really spoke to me was that idea of encouraging females to take risks. Um, so, so I learned a lot. I know everyone watching both live and in the future did too. And um, we'll all be sure to check out that video we missed <laughs> in the middle there. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of fun research. And also, yes, and also one of the pieces that um, we definitely want our viewers and, and um, those who watch us to think about is the role that technology plays in trying to help us blend and balance because it can be both friend and so we want to find ways to utilize it appropriately and um, mindfully. Absolutely. Um, if you're interested in joining our Voxer group that we've mentioned a few times today, you can find Laquita and I on Twitter. Send us a message and we'll throw you in there. Great. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to take a moment now for those of you watching to tell you a little bit about the events that are coming up next so you can continue your day of workshops. Um, as you could see here, um, what's coming up uh, in workshops 15 through 19. If you take a look at the screen, you see Chris Lehman doing workshop 15, Roslinder um, and Kelly Sowerbrower are doing workshop 16. Um, and I've seen Ros present before, those are always good workshops. Uh, 17 is Tani and Claire, 18 is Julianne and Dominique, and 19 is Christina and students. So you can check in with any of those. And um, since this is free, uh, you might consider donating to our um, charity that we've adopted for this, which is Court Appointed Special Advocates for Children. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy the rest of the day.